What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode we're going to talk about what code goes where when you're building a website using SAS. Organizing stuff is hard. You have to ask yourself, does this code spark joy? All right, I have a text editor open and today we're going to be using Visual Studio Code. I have a site uh, that is open in my left hand bar you can see and in this site structure or the architecture itself I have an assets folder and I have a SAS folder and I have a bunch of subdirectories and I have some other SAS and CSS folders. What's this all about? Well first we have to ask the question why SAS, right? What, why should we use a pre-processing language like SAS to help us build out our style sheets? Well, a few reasons. Number one, it helps to supercharge your CSS. There's some features inside of SAS that just make sense. They're just super duper awesome. We'll talk about those in a little bit. But one of the biggest things for me is it allows you to chop up your style sheets into partial style sheets and then compile them all together. So if I wanna work on module A, I don't have to look through one massive 5,000 line style sheet to find the styles for module A. I can just go into a style sheet titled module A. It's a lot more accessible um, from an organizational standpoint, from an architecture standpoint. So um, that being said, the first thing you'll notice is we have a main.sass. Now main.sass is just nothing but a bunch of import statements. And so you can see I have, well, that shouldn't be a two, 21, that should be a one. So you can see inside of my main.sass file, it's just a bunch of import statements and these are being grouped into the architecture uh, or the subdirectories that I have over here. So I have helpers, tools, basics, layout. I have helpers, tools, basics, layout. So each of these subdirectories are kind of represented there in a commented out uh, little kind of line. And then underneath that are each of the uh, CSS files or the SAS partials as we call them, it's a partial style sheet. Um, and those are being kind of included or imported. So they're all kind of grouped together and nice. Now what's really cool about this structure, first off about using SAS in your projects, is anytime I wanna create something new, I can create it in the respective subdirectory here and then I can just add it inside of the respective subdirectory inside of my main SAS file. It's gonna go ahead and start importing that and all as well. You've now included all of those styles in as well. So it's easy, this is very modular and it's easy to understand organizationally, right? So that's kind of the first thing about SAS. Where does it go? Well, all the import statements go into a main SAS file that are sucking everything in and then spitting out a main CSS file. So you can see here's our main CSS file, it is, it's thousands of lines long versus this variables partial that's only 38 lines long. So that's a lot easier to manage and maintain. Very maintainable, I think is something to keep in mind, okay? Let's go into the subdirectories and see what I put where. Well, first let's, let's talk about the subdirectories. First, I have helpers subdirectory, tools, basics, layout modules, and pages. This is just the way I do it. Um, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things and this is the way I do it for, you know, for my projects. But you can take this, build upon this, modify it however you want, just the way I like to do it. Okay, so first up, let's go in, let's talk about helpers. The word helpers, you know, the title of that subdirectory should be anything and everything that helps you while building out the rest of this project. So in SAS, we have access to some, some things like functions, mixins, and variables. In this project, I don't think I have any functions, but I do have some mixins and I do have some variables. So what goes inside of these partials? So the reason this is so important, the reason variables and mixins and functions all go into helpers is because I can reuse what I, you know, what I assign here through the rest of the project. For instance, in my variables, I'm gonna define some colors and I'm gonna, I'm gonna create variables out of those colors and then through the rest of the project, I'm not gonna put, I'm gonna put in the name or the, of the variable. So it could be the name of the color or it could be primary, secondary, tertiary, neutral. And then as that project progresses later on, if the primary color ceases to be purple and starts to be red, you just make that change one time and it cascades through everything else you do versus going into uh, you know each line and changing the hex code. Now there are CSS variables, you can use those if you want, but if you're using SAS, it's really easy to use them this way. Mix-ins are literally just um, a mixture of CSS styles that you put all together 
and you can include those mix-ins um, into your into your styles or into the rest of your style sheets. Now, the reason mix-ins are so cool is because I create these little recipes, whether it's like background size and background color and all that stuff, and then I can just apply all the styles. And if I ever wanna change that style, like let's say this is a full image style, um, I can just change it here and it'll, it'll apply everywhere. So that's the helpers and uh, that's what's inside of usually of my helper subdirectory. I have tools. Tools is anything that you're using, um, like third party code, vendors, any of that kind of stuff. So here's like my normalize um, CSS. This is like my, my, the thing that's normalizing and clearing all the styles out in the browser. Um, or I have, this is a, uh, smooth.sass, this is a third party vendor for like CSS page transitions. I just ported it into being in the SAS language instead of CSS and I included it in here and I probably have some JavaScript that goes along with this. So uh, tools are just like tools of the trade, things that I'm pulling from other places. It can be, you know, animation packages, it can be resets. Um, it can even be, I'm using Bourbon, which is like a CSS framework and neat inside of this. So all my tools, everything goes inside of there. I always know where to look for third party vendors and tools. Uh, basics. Basics are like, as stupid as, as simple as it sounds, the bare bones basics of your website. So you can see I have buttons and global styles, links and, um, you know, selection colors, typography. And I try to keep everything contained into those into those uh, partials. So let's go into buttons. You can see anything that has to do with any kind of button or button style, you'll find in here. Inside of the base, I'm gonna do some basic, kind of base CSS style, like what happens to just the overall HTML tag, before and after, containers. So that, and like even wrappers, because I use that class a lot, right? All of that should be here inside of the home base kind of stuff. Links is another good one to define all links here. Uh, this would be different than buttons. These would be regular, like regular link styles. Um, you have selection colors all right there. And then typography, you're gonna set up your whole typographic kind of scale, vertical rhythm, colors, all that stuff here. Um, and the reason also in my structure of why these things have one, two, three, four, five, six on them is because I want all of my variables to come first and all my mix-ins so that I can apply them here because inside of my main SAS file, it matters what order you're importing all of your styles, right? I can't in my basics or my buttons here call to a variable of neutral if that variable is only is being called way down here because it doesn't understand it yet. So you do have to cascade things correctly. Keep that in mind. Um, so that's what I have inside of basics is anything that is a basic style that's pertinent to the overall structure of the actual site itself. After that, you leave kind of like these first three are real crucial to all those basics and like global styles. After that, you start getting a little bit more specific. I'm gonna go into layouts. So laid out, layouts for me would be um, any major like overarching portions of the site that are gonna be reused a lot, like a footer or a navigation or a header or main content. Those are big areas. Now next you'll see modules. Modules are smaller bite-sized areas. You could combine these, I guess, if you want. But um, for me, I like to separate the two, like large areas, like, you know, um, footers and so on and so forth. So that's what I put inside of my layouts uh, directory. And inside of my modules, I'm gonna put anything that I create um, that is modular, that's gonna be reused across the site, smaller things that can get plugged and played across the site as you go. So, you know, like maybe it's a logo section or a stats section or a video section. I wanna keep things really, really modular. You can open that up and just see some of the styles that are there, okay? So that's modules. And then lastly, I get into specific pages. So, you know, kind of, it's kind of an atomic design structure here. Pages are made out of modules, modules and layouts, right? Modules and layouts include styles from basics and tools and helpers. So you're kind of like in that, that old Brad Frost atomic design pattern. I'm kind of trying to implement that here. So you have uh, about and download. Um, these are all different pages or templates. You could call it templates as well if you want. 
Um, but uh, you really should be able to, if you do things wisely, should be able to mix and match inside of your system to create as few templates or pages as possible, but instead just switch in and out modules and layouts. Well, that's it. That's how I structure my projects, and I would love to hear how you structure your projects. Leave those recommendations down in the comments. I'd love to see them. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and code and walkthroughs like this one, so maybe stick around. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments as well, and check the description for some helpful resources on SaaS and building websites. Hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. Hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're structuring things and putting things where they belong. I'll see you in the next one.